Some are saying this game-winning attempt from Brooklyn's Kyrie Irving was a bad shot, but anyone who knows Ball is well aware that two above-average rebounders in Claxton and Simmons being in the vicinity give Brooklyn a great chance at another possession if Irving misses. As the pull-up three from the logo in Butler's grill hits back rim, key in on how Watanabe and O'Neal crash the glass from the weak and strong sides. Lowry and Oladipo don't communicate, Orlando Robinson's out-of-bounds boxing out Claxton, meaning Ben and Nick have successfully factored out Miami's main defensive board getters. Larceny commences when an over-the-back foul on Lowry becomes one of the game's many 50-50 no-calls, but Hero's also concerned with Watanabe while that happens, freeing up Royce to make his second putback game winner of the year. The Brooklyn Nets are trouble. We looked at how Brooklyn turned it around after Vaughn replaced Nash in the last Nets video uploaded to this channel. This video, however, breaks down the all-time deadly yet pretty to watch offensive bag from Kyrie, while also discussing the most recent update on Kevin Durant's knee injury. Plus, we'll look at the two unsung heroes for this Nets squad. You're going to want to stay tuned because not only did the Nets win 12 straight games recently, but now they've won 18 of their last 20 outings for the first time in franchise history. Nine of those wins have come against playoff teams, two of which have been against 2021's champions in the Milwaukee Bucks and 2022's champions in the Golden State Warriors. Right quick, follow the channel at dflowhoops on Instagram and Twitter to further support. Join the 10.5% of you watching that or subscribe and leave a thumbs up, of course, if you enjoy the content. To that rare 10.5%, you know how it is. Thanks so much for your continued support. So, I'm gonna be real with you, Kyrie Irving's one of my personal favorite hoopers to watch, ever. And this version of Kyrie is the most efficient one we've ever seen. From the mid-range area, Irving's making a career high by far 59.6% of his jumpers. On three point shots after taking seven plus dribbles, this year he's making 43.1% of his shots. On the prior possession, Irving manipulates the switched onto him Tyler Hero with the blow by, following a between the legs cross, between the legs behind the back, and shifty first step after bursting out of an offhanded hezzy. Crazy push ahead into the lane and lefty finish by the way, but this next play ideally mixes it up in comparison to that last attack. Miami's anticipating that previous combination into another take to the basket right here, but instead of crossing over again and going behind the back like he did the last time, Irving's gonna utilize a moving hezzy and transition into a momentum cross, getting Oladipo leaning. One of Kyrie's best weapons is the rudimentary footwork his jump shooting is equipped with. You have to respect the ability to maintain energy after all those bounces, the aptitude to stay balanced and get enough force and fluidity on his jumper to knock it down, also requires being in the best of physical condition. It's daggers like that which give me flashbacks of when this man iced Golden State down the stretch in Game 7 back in 2016. All those matchups between the Cavs and Warriors were dope throughout the 2010s. You saw his game winner against my Raptors recently. He's been clutch all year for the Kings County faithful, as was the case down the stretch in South Beach for Kyrie. Hezzy and fake Hezzy dribble leads to this in and out move as Kyrie steps back. Butler evidently predicts that move, forcing Irving to put it on the deck after crossing to his weaker hand. It's a seemingly innocent drive as Kyrie gets close to getting caught up in the air as Bam shuts off the paint. However, an inadvertent stunt from Hero and Kyrie having a second sense for where O'Neal is allows him to swiftly make the proper read for a kickout. Great response to pressure there from the mentally zoned in Kyrie, who looks as all-around healthy as he's ever been. You love to see it. The facilitating reads Kyrie was making all night were exceptional. More dime dropping sees Kai find the streaking TJ Warren, who's a massive addition to this Nets team by the way, onto another fantastic read by Kyrie, as plays like these next few are going to be huge in the playoffs when opposing game plans are stricter. O'Neal's big body switches Struess onto him, another drive left gives Irving three open teammates to find. Buying into Coach Vaughn's system, high-low action on this play sees Irving find Simmons on a half-court rim run. Credit to Ben for the soft touch. On the far left wing, as Klax and Curry set the innovatively ran early shot clock stagger screen, Robinson and Lowry blitz, completely trapping him, but instead of folding and giving it up right away, he gets all the way around to the far right wing off the bounce, leaving Lowry and Robinson in the dust, before niftily splitting the stunt of Struess, sweeping through the lane, using a quick hezzy bounce, Euro step, and fake floater. 
That's next level offensive awareness. You saw that underrated playmaking, capping it off like he started this game. Back to the patented pure shot creation. Maintaining poise with Butler draped on him like a dog on a bone. Multiple extremely advanced moving stop and go hezzies. Still see Butler play perfect defense, but to put the Nets up one in the clutch, Irving's gonna just drift off him and set his release point far back so the length of Butler can't bother him. That's a Kobe Bryant-esque ability to change release points in adaptation to the on-ball defender's positioning, just an all-around offensive mastermind. We should also appreciate the completely underrated Nick Claxton, who's taken over as the NBA's league-leading shot blocker, recently surpassing Milwaukee's Brooke Lopez. Without Claxton's 26th best rebounding presence, he should be higher in that, by the way, Royce O'Neal wouldn't have been able to snag the game-winning putback to make Brooklyn 18-2 in their last 20. That leads us into the breakdown of Royce O'Neal, whose addition to this Nets roster has been a very under-talked about storyline amidst all this success for this Jacques Vaughn-fueled ball club. After developing into a premier 3 and D guy during his time in Salt Lake City, that archetype is precisely what Kyrie and the hopefully back soon Kevin Durant were desperately needing a season before this. O'Neal's a massive pickup, from his persistent hustle to his ability to occasionally put it on the deck and create shots for himself, but of course his primary weapon is the spot-up three-point shot. It's scary that O'Neal's 40.1% three-point percentage is only fifth best on this Nets team among Brooklyn players who've attempted at least two triple per night. I said Denver was the NBA's deepest team in another recent video, which could be the case. Nevertheless, this Brooklyn team is scarily talented 1-15 through 15 in their own right. The status of easy money sniper Kevin Durant is still up in the air as of this recording. KD's about to go through an MRI. You may or may not know the results of that when you watch this, but given the Nets survived without Kyrie for a long stretch, the next man up mentality seems to be a real factor with this squad, so I wouldn't be too worried if I was a Nets fan. Who's got to step up the most without KD? Best answer down below in the comments. Guess next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by March 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Two shout outs from my last two uploads other than my Raptors rant of course. Go to firstly, Ken Saludo, who says, the Bucks just seem to find the groove because they can't stay healthy. They're still the second best team in the East, but they're not as dominant as the previous Bucks team. Chris is injured for the most part of the season, and he's the second star of this team. Giannis also missed a lot of games already. If the Bucks are healthy and get their groove back, I still believe they're the best team in the East. Great take from Kent. And secondly, to Puda1082, who predicted Nuggets at home, Nuggets win. That turned out to be true. Thanks for watching, though. Have a good one.